We're recording, so start. go for it. Perfect. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Daniel Fontani. I work as CTO um, in uh, Sintra Consulting. That's a company based in Italy. And we have offices in London and uh, Poland, but I'm not here today wearing the hat of uh, CTO. I'm here today as an open source enthusiast. So uh, let's go. Let's go on. Um, this speech is about um, open source and the change um, in the mindset of people and companies that bring from the uh, open source to the open mind. So um, why I'm here today? I'm here today uh, to share my experience about open source and to uh, I have to share what I learned after uh, 15 years. I play with open source tool and I play with open source project and I have produced many open source uh, uh, tools. So the first question, the first question I have to, um, to make now is if open source is for loser. And this is a provocative question because open, why I'm asking that? Um, please, please don't answer. Don't answer yet. Uh, let me explain why I'm asking this question. Um, it was uh, 2005, um, so about 15 years ago. I'm speaking um, not about the Paleolithic, but it was probably the Stone Age of digital innovation because we had a very, very, very big leap. Um, what people talked about open source at that time, uh, when I was beginning uh, to work as to work as programmer, um, it was an unsuccessful business model because uh, uh, we produce source code and just take the source code and go to the to others. So uh, it was not so so good. It's not not so profitable. And most of person, a lot of people uh, talk that open source was uh, something like Linux, just like Linux. And in that year, in that year, um, I meet GPL license. So I understood that open source wasn't only an operative system. It wasn't not just a matter of penguins or black screen. So I understand that I could do more with open source. I could uh, uh, produce software without any worries. I can share my work with other people. I can meet more people and uh, produce uh, things together. So I, I had uh, something like um, something like what happened to Helad in uh, in the previous speech when he see the uh, the COVID the COVID icon and he was inspired. I, 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 I was impressed by his word, his inspiration. And I have done the same. I uh, was inspired by this, this license that's just a piece of paper, nothing that we usually read before going to sleep. But it was something that tell me that we can do something ethical, we can do something interesting. So a few days after, I started to work uh, to my first open source project. And it's allowing, it sounds some, a little bit, a little bit vintage because this product was called Ardo CSS because I use this name, uh, Ardo, because uh, make software was Ardo. So uh, this, this probably uh, tell you that I'm not a good marketer. And, but I, I, <laughs> That, that's a fact, that's a fact. So I wasn't a good mark and I picked the wrong name, but way useful to the people because it was an IDA that allowed to um, manage CSS files. At that time, we are very, very longer to things like the one that uh, Hella showed us. At that time, most of people didn't know what CSS was and most of IDA doesn't support syntax alight for CSS. So I created this interface and people uh, download it and use it. it. Sounds stupid nowadays that we needed an IDA for CSS, but it was a small revolution for me and for some people at that time. And it was a very, very real, nice experience for that. 
of course, uh, the, the, the years after that, uh, most IDA integrated this intelligence in uh, their um, tool. And so I probably, uh, probably my tool was throw away by most of downloaders. But what, what remained to me, uh, it was that open source um, uh, was not just a technology or a methodology, it was something more. It was uh, a philosophy, it was a culture. And other things that remained to me was the small success I got with this application because I get 100,000 downloads that uh, even this one, this one uh, makes uh, Lauga nowadays because uh, uh, each application on smartphone get billions of downloads just a few days after we published on the marketplace, but it was 2005, just remember this. And uh, for a 19 years old guy, it was very, very, very huge result. Um, but after that, this doesn't make me rich. I didn't get a cent for all that in in installation. So I didn't plan any freeware version, any in-app ads, uh, nothing of nothing. So uh, I just sell the product of my time for free. So I just work for free. And, and uh, what is the, what is what, what I learned from this experience? Uh, I got a very, very, very lot of experience because I created an application that was uh, uh, full of feature. He had automatic updates, he had uh, error reporting, it, it, and I create a little framework with reusable UI comp components. I get some feedback for university and I create a small community of developer. So it was very, very great experience to me. And even I didn't get any money and all user throw away my application, I go on because I was still excited. Um, it was, I didn't lost my faith and I go on on this. Um, so, after that, I tried again with another, with another open source tool. Next time was a log collecting tool. Um, has the, has the, uh, the word itself explain a log collecting is a system that takes log from application and put in central database and allow people to read the logs. So I created this application. I spent a lot of time on this. I created a nice tool, but then I, I go too slow and after the, the development phase, I understand that a lot of big player moved on this and there was so many solutions for this tool that all this, also this, in this case, I throw my work away and in the loving memory of Hubling that was live just uh, just two year two year um, I finished this this project and I do, I didn't quit I didn't quit with open source I didn't lost my faith and I go on I go on um, now now I'm still in a project in an open source project it is this time is called uh, raw CMS is a netless CMS. Um, I started to do this because uh, I felt that all um, I felt that um, headless CMS is is something very cool is something that companies and people needs but the uh, solution offered by the market uh, are not so complete of course if you, if you want to stay on a free tire or a near free tire so I take uh, my vision of headless CMS and I created a CM, headless CMS uh, uh, tool. So basically we have a tool that can uh, create content and allow people to uh, create new content types and uh, from interface add the uh, item and something like that, uh, uh, integrate with Gatsby and create static website. Uh, but more or these that are common feature on headless CMS. I had also a layer for developers. So developers can go in the browser and write a, write some Lambda function, write some background job and write code and write hook. And uh, we can also have a programming part inside the Adelaide CMS. So it is more than an Adelaide CMS. It is a low code platform. So you can 
uh, throw away your API, throw away your backend, and just use this tool uh, as add the CMS as uh, backend of your front end application. So that was my idea, and I'm working on this because I didn't lost my faith on open source. So. After uh, two years of work, I have this tool that is available on GitHub. We have many download, and still in 2020, I'm not earning money from uh, open source. So what did I learn in all that time? Um, I learned a lot of things. I didn't earn money, but I earned competencies. That was me in 2005. I was a Delphi 5 developer, and I hope and that everybody in this room uh, forget about uh, forgot about Delphi 5, but it, it was a, a, a good tool at that time. And, and I was a .NET programmer. I worked in the framework 1.1.44, and anybody who started in this will remember this name because it was the first version number that worked. So, uh, after uh, 15 years, now I have a lot of competence learned in the field thanks to the uh, open source experience. I don't want to, to read all the, the name of the brand, you can just uh, look by yourself. But, but more of this, I get, I get something more that technical skill because technically a course on Udemy and just learn uh, new things. But what is hard to, uh, to get from courses uh, are soft skill. My experience on um, open source project uh, teach me how to manage a remote team. And I had to work with people that was um, outside my country border. So I had to improve my English find a way to speak with that person maybe in different time zone and this uh, forced me to show my face to show my face and everything you do in open source field is public so uh, this means that you have to do the best you don't want to uh, do something that is not cool so uh, uh, hi had another question against the the path I find. Uh, you you can ask me why you don't simply uh, buy a course on Udemy and train. Of course, I could I could train alone in my home with without speaking to anybody, without um, gifting any output of my work to other. I could have done this. I could have uh, keep my intellectuality property to myself. I could have done that without any, any probably without mm, too much limitation. But just assume that I am a generous person that I want to give my intellectual property and my work for free to others. And so, why a company should do the same? Because we know that company need profit is by definition. Uh, a company cannot donate their time or their intellectual property. They make investment to get more intellectual property and to get more money. Is 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 the market? Is the market? So there are two two good questions against again open source and these two question. Um, let come out the bigger open source limit because we have a central cost so me in the case that produce the software and the benefit of my work is um, shared for free to other persons so there is no matching between who where is the cost and where is the revenue and this is this is a, a very big limit is a very very big issue and that make uh, no sense to work on a system where you pay and other person get profit from this. And that's why probably in 2005, most of person talk that open source is for loser. So, and then, then, 
So I think also them are loser because they are investing even more billion in open source. Just see the Wall Street, um, the Wall Street graphic we see in 2050, in 2050, we have 7 billion and see, see the trend, see the trend that it's increasing. Facebook, Microsoft and Google and Netflix are investing uh, more and more on, uh, on the open source. And I think, I think they are not loser. They are not, not loser. Uh, and they are not, they are not foundation. They have profit. So why a profit company invest in open source and how they can earn money from it? That's a big question because until now we suppose that it was not so convenient to invest in open source, but big player does and big player increase their revenue joining the open source project. So, so how we can earn money from uh, open source? Uh, the first thing I have to do is, of course, for what I told, uh, I told you, I'm not the right person to explain this slide because I didn't earn one single euro or pound from uh, open source work. So probably I'm just speaking about theory. But what theory told us? We can have uh, the the simpler, the simpler and the simpler ways to get found. So you can ask for donation, you can use government found or so on. So just take money and work. It is, it is, it's very hard to, to find and may work just for one person that want to do some library or something like that in the spare time. So it's not so interesting. We have the, the dual licensing that the most hold uh, way to get money from open source. So you just tell, uh, this is my product. Uh, I license it using GPL or some open source library and I have the pro version or I have the paid version that can be used from other company to create OEM um, solution that can be packaged without uh, using the G GPL version or something like that. So dual licensing is a way that you can ask for a pro user to pay also the SIS solution. So many products give you the on-premise version that you can download it and you can install on your server. So at the end, you start to use that and you have a choice. You can just pay for your hosting or pay to the company, the hosting and the product in SIS. And this may be more economical for you. Um, so. These three option, these three option uh, lends to one very complicated uh, diagram like this one. So this is what this is something like a business model. Just business model uh, is, is, is something that can explain how people can interact in a open source business model. So uh, we have we have. Uh, a product that is created by the company, of course, and this product, as we see, uh, is shared to the community, the free user community. Some of that free user, if the if the product is a good product, will be evangelist of, of the product. So they can contribute to the product and can teach how to use the product to other free user. Can uh, tell. Uh, some other people to start using the product. So uh, the evangelism of community is something that reduces the marketing cost. And increasing the number of free users, you will increase the number of paying users because there is more probability that some free user will upgrade to the payment to the payment plan. And moreover, we can integrate uh, uh, some hosted services like maybe uh, Google API services when you have the uh, open source SDK and uh, open source SDK use API that are built based on the volume of traffic you do, you do with that one. So we can also find some business model that can 
uh, integrate intellectual property and open source together to uh, improve the business model and to share more the tool you want to sell. And this is a this is a good business model that most of tech company uh, use. But coming back, coming back to as a developer, as a developer, why I should share my work with others? Why I should uh, do that? There are many great reasons because as a developer, I can um, test things uh, without any limit. I can experiment anything I want without do any damage to my company outside outside the, uh, the company environment. So I can go home, I can start my project, I can meet new person, I can be trained by other people that know something more uh, in some technology. And I can learn, I can, I can improve my competences. And when I learn these things, I come back to my company and I kind of impress my boss. So this, oh, the open source improve careers and improve your, um, your, your path as professional. And moreover, you can learn what you want. Inside a company, you can train, but you have to train something that is useful for the company. But when you are alone, when you are alone, you can work on everything you want. It's not a problem of the market. So another good thing about uh, learning inside the open source is that what you learn, it's your, what you learn is your. So if you spend time on learning, you gain experience. It's something that uh, also Hella told in her previous speech at the end when he, he suggests us to play with our code. And playing with our, our code is good for improve us as professional and doing that inside our open source project uh, make us some, force us to, to uh, have some challenges. And that's, that's good, that's good. And moreover, it helps us for personal branding for personal branding because any things you do in open source field is public so can be seen and can help help you to be seen inside the internet and to be hired maybe in bigger company or from bigger brands so um, what really open source is uh, is a win-win approach. Open source is not for loser. Open source is an approach that is ethical, that is uh, uh, sustainable and may bring profits. So if we see in this diagram, uh, I'm not a marketer and probably I'm not a painter or a designer too, as you see from this, this terrible, this terrible uh, uh, design. But in, in, that, in, in that three point, I will represent the company uh, with the Euro things and developer and the community. So what we can have using in open source programs is that uh, company can have a revenue, developer can have benefits by uh, learning things and increase their visibility and getting a better uh, brand positioning and community get something that is for free. So uh, what I want to, to tell you about open source that it is a win-win approach when every, everything has a revenue. Um, and this is why uh, most of company passed from open source uh, to open mind. So thank you for listening. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much for a very insight, insightful talk, Daniele. Like it's really interesting to hear your experience uh, approximately 15 years ago as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's quite a contrast to some of us who like may have only started in the last few years perhaps. So it's, 
interesting just to see how open source has completely taken over and how even like the giants have done a complete U-turn on their attitude. So I do have some questions for you here actually. So um, first of all, Steve asks, are big companies just using open source as a tool to find talent? Uh, I hear about some, um, some guys that was, uh, uh, was looked by GitHub profile. So maybe uh, some HR looks to the um, GitHub profile. Uh, quite for sure in the second part of the hiring. So maybe uh, they get names uh, from usual uh, database like LinkedIn or so on. But before having the first interview, they see if you have, if you have a GitHub profile and what is published on, in, in the GitHub profile. Uh, in, in example, when I, I hire somebody or I'm going to make an interview to somebody, I see uh, if he have an open, a GitHub profile and I, I wa watch what he do, he do, if he publish things, just to see, just to see if, if the, the, the person is used to interact with community, is used to uh, produce code because maybe if you write code after work you have passion for the for for coding so this is a good uh, element for me when I uh, when I made an interview and uh, I I spoke with some guys that was hired than before the interview uh, he get after the interview he get uh, informed that they they have a good GitHub so uh, I sh this should mean that uh, HR looks to GitHub prof uh, profile. Okay, excellent. As well, yeah, as Steve has just said, so Steve did have a second question about how you'd regard some a, a job applicant who contributes to open source, but he's just also responded that you've answered that question too. So with that in mind, I think we're ready to move on to the third talk of the evening.